Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how blood clotting and inflammation protect the body against pathogens. In the last video, we saw that the body has a whole range of non-specific defences against pathogens. These include the skin, mucous membranes, and the enzyme lysozyme, which is found in tears. Remember that the non-specific defences are the same for all pathogens. Now, as we've seen, the skin is a major barrier against pathogens. However, if the skin is damaged, for example a cut or scrape, then pathogens can pass through the skin into the blood and the body tissue. In this case, the body responds by clotting the blood to prevent or reduce the entry of pathogens. Blood clotting involves platelets, which are found in the bloodstream. And I'm showing you a picture of platelets in the blood here. Platelets are tiny, short-lived fragments of cells with no nucleus. And platelets are formed continuously in the bone marrow before being released into the blood. OK, I'm showing you here a picture of a small arteriole. Remember that the walls of blood vessels have a layer of cells called the endothelium. Just outside of the endothelium, there are smooth muscle cells and proteins such as collagen. If the endothelium is damaged, for example if the skin is cut, then platelets are exposed to the proteins outside the endothelium. This activates the platelets, which now trigger blood clotting. Now I should point out that blood clotting is a very complex process involving a whole range of proteins. But for A level, you only need to know a simplified version. When activated, the platelets form a plug over the damaged area. The platelets also release chemicals called clotting factors, including thromboplastin. The thromboplastin, together with calcium ions in the blood, now act on a blood protein called prothrombin. This converts the prothrombin into an active enzyme called thrombin. Thrombin now acts on a soluble blood protein called fibrinogen, catalyzing the formation of insoluble fibrin. The insoluble fibrin forms a mesh which traps red blood cells, forming a blood clot or thrombus. Now, as well as triggering a blood clot, the activated platelets also release a chemical called serotonin. Serotonin causes the smooth muscle cells in the blood vessel wall to contract. This narrows the blood vessel, reducing blood flow to the damaged area. The body can now start to repair the damaged blood vessel. Now, as well as preventing blood loss, the blood clot also prevents the entry of pathogens. Over time, the clot dries to form a scab on the surface of the skin. The scab protects the underlying tissue from pathogens, while wound healing takes place. Skin cells under the scab divide and repair the damage. Eventually, the scab falls off, and the freshly repaired skin continues its job of protecting the body from the entry of pathogens. Now, tissue damage can also result in inflammation, and I'm showing that here. When tissue is damaged, this activates cells called mast cells. When they're activated, mast cells release a chemical called histamine, and histamine has multiple effects. Firstly, histamine causes nearby blood vessels to dilate or widen, and scientists call this vasodilation. This increases the supply of blood to the affected area, causing the area to feel hot and appear red. The increased temperature reduces the ability of pathogens to reproduce. Secondly, histamine makes the blood vessel walls more permeable. This allows more blood plasma to leave the blood and form tissue fluid. And the effect of this is to cause nearby tissues to swell and feel painful. Scientists call this swelling an edema. Now, as well as histamine, mast cells also release chemicals called cytokines. Cytokines are a whole range of chemicals produced by the body in response to an infection. Cytokines attract phagocytes to the damaged tissue in order to carry out phagocytosis of any pathogens present. Some cytokines can travel to the hypothalamus in the brain, where they trigger an increase in body temperature or a fever. And again, this increase in body temperature reduces the ability of pathogens to reproduce. In the next video, we'll be looking at phagocytosis.